hey there welcome back to my channel so right here i just wanted to start off because i did something a little bit different this week i basically made my grocery list within instacart app and i just wanted to compare the total of what i spent in the store versus what i would have spent just on groceries alone just due to the price difference not even including the service fee or tip or anything like that this total ended up being 224 dollars i spent 205 in the store which just blew my mind so i picked up all of the ingredients to do a small meal prep this week nothing extraordinary but i wanted to actually make this meal that i saw online it looked so good i actually saw a couple different versions and this is the one that i went with look at that pasta doesn't that just look so delicious so <laughs> the um pasta it's an italian dish it's not your typical like ground meat it's actually uh beef shank so that was slow roasted with all of these delicious vegetables um they were just so good carrots celery the more onions than you could even imagine honestly I wasn't really sure I obviously had to see it for myself to believe that the amount of onions I put in this dish actually cooked down and they were so so good everything was slow roasted over like I would say six hours so I wanted to start this recipe nice and early I say early but at this point I think it was like 2 2 30 so as you can see I just started by chopping up some carrots and celery I did already wash my parsley and put that over to the side. I didn't end up using all of the celery and carrots that I chopped up. I did put some away just to snack on, which I have been with some hummus. So good. But wanted to get all these ingredients prepped first. And honestly, from here, I probably should have sauteed these vegetables up at least because when I looked back at the recipe, I realized I did a little, did it a little wonky, which is okay. It really just, it, it turned out really good anyway. So now I know if I make this again, which I'm sure I will because it was so good. But watch how many onions this ends up being. It was literally, the pot was full, you'll see. And so I sliced up all these onions versus dicing them just because when you cook down onions they get super small and anyway so no need to go the extra mile in dicing them but I went ahead and just put all my sliced onions in the pot like I said I really should have just sauteed the carrots and celery first but I put this all in put the carrots and celery on top and I just let that go the reason why I should have done the carrots and celery first is just because of the volume of onions. I feel like I really had to mix it well to try to get those carrots and celery to the bottom of the pot. So yeah, uh, if I do this again, I would definitely do the, the lesser amount first and then start adding in the onions like the recipe showed. So I don't know why I think just because this gave me a roast vibe I wanted to add some additional herbs I went ahead and added some bay leaves thyme and rosemary which you can see I had in a little freezer bag because I've been freezing my herbs lately and at least the hardier ones it really works well so after a little while I let the onions get translucent and I figured I needed to move on to the next step and this is why I probably should have followed the recipe a little more closely, but that's okay. I made it work and it turned out really well, so I'm not mad about it. I added in some tomato paste so that that could cook through. Again, roast vibe, so I added a little Worcestershire sauce and mixed that in. I wanted that to cook a little bit so that the tomato paste can kind of develop some good brown flavor. I added all of the rest of the onions to the pan that I set aside so that I could clean the pot out or at least clear it out and add some oil, butter, and those beef shanks. All I did to these before I browned them was season them with some garlic salt and pepper, black pepper. 
Um, I didn't want to go crazy with the seasonings and I didn't feel like I needed to because there was so much flavor in the other coming from the other ingredients. So I just deglazed the pan with some beef broth and some red wine, which I poured a glass for myself. Don't think I didn't. <laughs> and I added some garlic in there because some whole garlic cloves because I forgot to add those in with the veggies, which is no big deal. They cooked down through the entire time that I was slow roasting this in the oven. Ideally, I would have cooked this in a Dutch oven, but I don't have one. I will be getting one as soon as I can though. And I would have covered this with foil, but somehow I ran out. So I'm just going to let that go low and slow, 325. Like I said, it took about six hours. So in the meanwhile, I needed to get some other stuff done. I figured I would make um, some breakfast for us throughout the week, which was so, so good. I will definitely be making this on a regular basis. It was a sausage gravy casserole, which I'm not typically a casserole girly, but this one was calling my name. So I just browned up some onions and some Italian breakfast sausage. A meat chopper for ground meat is a must have in the kitchen. It breaks up ground meat so well. Just a little side note there. But over there you can see I am dicing or cubing up some chicken breasts. I want to get that marinating. And I had a couple minutes here next to the stove while I was browning up this meat. I wanted to go ahead and add some flour to the sausage to get that um, get a little roux going in the bottom of that pan because I am going to add some milk and heavy cream to that. I usually don't make my sausage gravy so loose like milky but I wanted to make sure that this was extra creamy because it was going into a casserole. On those chicken nuggets, I just wanted to get those seasoned up and marinating. So I ended up using milk and pickle juice. Don't tell my kids that um, because I saw that's how Chick-fil-A makes their chicken nuggets, which I love their chicken nuggets. So got that put to the side. I had some scraps from the chicken breast that I didn't want to go to waste just with a little extra fat. So I kept those to the side and I did end up slicing and seasoning up some other chicken thighs that I had just to let those sit for a little while before I could get to grilling them. So the sausage gravy is done. I wanted to finish up this casserole. I took half a stick of cream cheese as well as a little bit of sour cream and some cheddar cheese. Of course, se seasoned it with salt and pepper. And then I added in some frozen, frozen hash browns and I tried to mix that all together just to make sure that the, the cream cheese mixture was completely coating all of the hash browns and I put that in a baking dish of course you know I sprayed it and then I just put the sausage gravy right over top of that after I got it all smoothed out into a nice little layer Now, this breakfast is not the healthiest. Honestly, I was planning on making this for dinner, like um, breakfast for dinner, and I was going to make biscuits and all of that, but I ended up just using it like a meal prep for breakfast, and we just fried some eggs over top, and that was it. Speaking of eggs, I'm going to go ahead and get some of those boiled just to have for snacking throughout the week, and then I, like I said, I seasoned up some chicken thighs. I knew with these chicken thighs, I wanted to use them to make quesadillas at some point this week for dinner. So I ended up seasoning them with some chili powder, cumin, um, some lemon juice, cilantro, those kinds of flavors. Another meal prep item checked off my list because I went like a week without minced garlic in my freezer and it was just about the death of me. So I wanted to get some more of that prepped because I hate peeling and chopping garlic, don't we all? So I figure if I just do one big batch, stick it in my freezer, it works so well and it, I use it for everything. The minced garlic in the jar just does not taste the same. I mean, it's good for some things, but having fresh garlic is so good. So I got these all peeled up and put them in my blender cup to get those blitzed up with some olive oil. But I wanted to get these chicken nuggets going. I finished up the grilled chicken, put that in, the, in a container to put in the fridge. 
and I started frying up these chicken nuggets. I just um, f took them straight out of the marinade and put them in some flour, seasoned of course, and then just tossed them around before I put them in some oil. I just cannot stand spending the money that I do on a bag of chicken nuggets from the grocery store for them to not even taste like real chicken. And this sweet and spicy mustard from ShopRite is it. Y'all check it out. Back to the garlic, I just added some olive oil in with the cloves and got that going on the blender, but of course it was giving me a hard time. Too much going on, so I had to take out what was blended at the top near the blade and then continue while also pounding on the blender just to get everything to, to mix together. One of these days I will get myself a food processor, but until then, we use what we have. Once I got that garlic checked off my list, I washed my blender really, really well and stuffed it with spinach and topped it off with a little bit of almond milk because I really love having spinach in my smoothies, but I cannot stand the texture of spinach when it's not blended. So this was a step that I was doing every single day, not filling this, the cup with spinach to its capacity, but at least halfway and then blending it with almond milk before I would even put the other ingredients to my protein shakes. So having to skip this step just saves me a lot more time. And this was so easy to do. I will definitely continue doing this. This was the first time, but that's exactly why I bought these molds because I, if I can prep something and have them in smaller portions in the freezer just to pull out when I need a single serving of something, the, it just makes my life a whole lot easier. So I did end up using this pitcher just so I could kind of measure everything out and it worked out perfectly. And so I just stuck this uh, mixture in these molds and put it in the freezer and they were frozen and good to go for my next shake in the morning. I hard boiled some eggs. I've been loving to snack on these throughout the week just when I need something super quick and obviously with the protein they're just good for you all around. I got these peeled up and just put in a container. I find that I eat them more often when they're already peeled but I just have to make sure that I'm actually eating them. <laughs> So to get this chicken nuggets in the freezer, I did want to kind of flash freeze them. I just stuck them on a plate and put them in a shelf in the freezer. And I just did a few rounds of that just so that they weren't all clumping together in one freezer bag. So it, it made it a lot easier when it came to cooking them and actually eating them throughout the week. And finally, six hours later, it is time to get dinner going. I was looking forward to this all day. You can see I have some pasta going in a very shallow pot. I just shredded the meat off of the bones and it was so tender it fell right off the bones. I did put half of that mixture to the side to cool because I wanted to save that. I did double the recipe so I wanted to save that for another meal. I just let it cool and put it in a freezer bag to throw in the freezer for another day. To the rest of the meat I added the pasta and some of the pasta water or actually all of what was left in the in the pasta. So I just mixed that all together and it made its own little sauce with the pasta water and the Parmesan cheese that I added. This was really, really good. My family loved it. I don't think I've ever cooked with beef shanks before, but this was a really good first time. I really enjoyed this. And if you can peek that breakfast casserole over there in the corner, gosh, so good. Look at that beauty. So I figured I would just take you along on my Monday just because I feel like sometimes Sundays are just not enough to get everything done that needs to be done for the next week. I have been trying to get back into my gym morning routine just because the kids are going back to school and it just makes sense for me to get my life together at this point. When I get up and go to the gym in the morning, I feel like after that, I have already accomplished more than enough for the day, so it just motivates me to be even more productive throughout the day. So I get up, make myself some toast. This is my favorite protein bread from Aldi, just with a little bit of peanut butter and 
I was so upset because I forgot to pick up jelly from the grocery store. That's okay. I will live for this week. I just have to make sure that it's on my list for next week. I do need a little something though before I go to the gym. Otherwise, I feel like I will die. And back in the kitchen for a post-workout smoothie. I am actually putting to use those blocks, those spinach blocks that I prepped. It is a game changer for real. So I typically will add some frozen fruit, bananas, berries, whatever I have in the freezer, and my Equate um, plant-based protein. I like the Equate brand versus the Orgain, which is what I started using when I went to the the plant-based protein but I think that it is really good I always have the chocolate and vanilla so I can switch it up or so I can curb my sweet tooth if I'm feeling like I need some chocolate at some point I will make a quick protein shake or even bake with it but most importantly after a workout it is much needed So I do work full time. I work remotely. And so if I have a few minutes before my workday starts, I'll usually just pick up around the house, you know, set the set the tone for the day. And so I just wanted to make sure I got that done before getting to work this morning. So currently my schedule Monday through Friday, I aim to wake up at 430 and get to the gym by 5, 5.15, and then I'm home by 6.30 for my husband to get out the door for work. Like I said, I'm still trying to get my stuff together, and throughout the summer, I definitely have been slacking on the gym routine, but now that my kids are going back to school, I just feel like I need to be more proactive and you know, just make sure that I'm getting that time in for me when I go to the gym. I don't mind waking up early. I definitely find it motivates me to just be on top of things at night and get to bed at a decent time. So when I'm working out consistently, I don't know about you, but I feel like I could eat all day every day. So it's nice and early. I'm going to make some breakfast before work just a couple of fried eggs and I did prep that breakfast casserole so that was really easy honestly it just took five minutes for me to fry these eggs and make some toast I threw the casserole that I had kind of portioned out um, put that in the microwave for a couple of minutes and everything came together and when I tell you this casserole is definitely going to be on the rotation whether we have it for breakfast or dinner or whatever I'm definitely going to be making this again and pretty often because it was just creamy, cheesy, it was savory, all of the things. And then the fried eggs on top, ah, uh, so good. I, I feel like I've said so good a million times, but I have just really been in a good groove in the kitchen lately. I'm sorry, I got to pat myself on the back there because <laughs> sometimes, especially as a mom, I feel like when I am responsible for everyone in my family's meals all day every day then it gets a little overwhelming and sometimes boring and mundane so when I find really good recipes I just I'm happy about it so I won't take you through my whole work day but from 9 to 5 30 you can bet this is where I was sitting <laughs> All right, so it's quarter to six. I need to get dinner started. I prepped a couple of things yesterday that will make my week just a whole lot easier. Um, tonight, I'm trying a new recipe, kofta and potatoes. So I'm gonna turn you around and we'll see how it goes. So from what I have learned, this is a Turkish dish and it came across my feed one day and oh my gosh it just looked really good it looked very flavorful it looked like something i wanted to try and like now this came together so quickly it was a one pan meal it went in the oven it was no fuss and what more could i ask for honestly 
I will say I had planned to prep the meatballs ahead of time on Sunday um, just because I really wasn't sure. I had a meal plan. I wasn't sure in which order we were eating what, but this meal was still very easy to put together, so I'm not complaining. So the first thing I did was I got my oven preheating. I believe I went 425. I wasn't sure what the temperature was from the actual recipe, but I just went with what my heart told me to. <laughs> So I got the oven preheating. I went ahead and seasoned my potatoes. One seasoning I did forget to add was cumin, which I just sprinkled some over the pan when I took it out of the oven once I realized. I just layered those potatoes on a well-oiled pan, stuck those in the oven, and diced up an onion for the meatballs. I used the same bowl with the seasonings and everything I had the potatoes in. And so it made clean up a breeze. I had some fresh parsley already washed and ready to go. So I chopped some of that up. Once I was finished chopping that parsley up, I just added it straight to the bowl with the onions and added some ground beef. And the rest of that ground beef I threw in a pan just to brown that up. But to this bowl for the meatballs, I added one egg and probably about a half a cup or so worth of breadcrumbs. And then from there, I just added my seasonings, which were the same things that I added to the potatoes, black pepper, onion powder, garlic powder, paprika, salt, and a Mediterranean blend that I believe I got from Aldi. It's got a really nice mint and citrus flavor. It is really, really good. Of course, as I mentioned earlier, I forgot the cumin in the meatballs, but I would have added that as well if I would have remembered. Um, but I'm just adding a little bit of olive oil to add some moisture. Got those meatballs mixed up, and then I just shaped them out and put them on a plate. And I just set those aside so that I could throw them on the pan with my potatoes. So I did put that other half of ground beef in a pan just so I can get that browned up. I had plans for this ground beef for another meal this week. I pulled my potatoes out. They looked like they were about halfway done. I didn't want to flip them or anything just because I wanted them to get nice and crispy and brown on the underside. I just added my meatballs in between all of the potatoes, stuck that back in the oven and let that go. Since I just put the meatballs in the oven, I figured while I'm already in the kitchen, I might as well go into the laundry room and get some laundry folded and start another load. There's a lot going on in my laundry room, which you can't see, but I had like three baskets of laundry that were needing to be separated and just dealt with. And so I tried to get some of that done this evening while, like I said, I was already in the kitchen. I was already doing some other things. Wanted to get this out of the way for the week. One thing I will say I've been trying to do on a nightly basis is getting a load of laundry in the washer ready to go, stick the laundry detergent and the fabric softener in there right on top and just set that and leave it for the next day. When I wake up, I can go ahead and just start the washer without having to think about it and it's good to go. Dinner's still in the oven, shouldn't be too much longer. And then I have green beans that are in the microwave. You know, I love me a steamable vegetable. I was able to fold that laundry that I had going earlier. Um, I have some fruit that I want to get washed up and prepped and just throw in the fridge. Um, that'll only take me a few minutes, so hopefully by that, by the time I'm done doing that, dinner will be done because I'm starving. 90% of my produce gets thrown in a bowl of water with some vinegar just to wash that up. I went ahead and got these grapes and strawberries in there, both at the same time because it just made my life a lot easier that night. <laughs> but I just set those and let those go for a little while just to soak.
back to dinner because the meatballs and potatoes should be coming out of the oven in just a few minutes. I just went ahead and added some butter, salt and pepper and garlic to a bowl. Added my green beans in there that I steamed in the microwave and gave those a mix and those were good to go. So one of the things for this recipe that really caught my eye or my taste buds was this sauce that the meatballs and potatoes were plated on top of. Now I did have to be mindful. Greek yogurt and hummus are definitely not on the list of food items that my kids eat on a typical day. But I figured I would try this and if anything, they could just leave the sauce off of their plate, which they did. But my husband and I really enjoyed the flavors of it. And so it was just a base of Greek yogurt and this garlic, this roasted garlic hummus that I got from Aldi, which is really good. I added just some lemon juice and some salt and pepper, gave it a good mix and of course a taste test. And it really was just as simple as that. I will say though, with the recipe, it called for tahini. I knew I wasn't going to find tahini at Aldi, or at least I didn't look. They might have it seasonally, but uh, so instead I just used the hummus, which has tahini in it. So it worked out. And as you'll see, I just spread some of that sauce right on the bottom of my bowl and added the potatoes and meatballs right on top. And of course, because I slathered olive oil all over that plate plus a little bit of the fat from the meatballs those drippings with the sauce and everything it, the flavors were just so delicious and worked so well together i would definitely suggest you try it after dinner i got right back in the kitchen i just put this uh, fruit that i prepped away in their proper containers and i threw those in the fridge and of course got to cleaning up the kitchen because like I said, I'm really just trying to nail down my nightly routine to make my mornings and the next day just go so much smoother. I went ahead and got that ground beef that I let cool after I browned it. I got that in a container to put in the fridge. Like I said, I had already had plans for this. So I'm glad I was able to get that browned up and prepped for another day. This is the very last thing that I do in the kitchen before I shut it down. Getting my coffee ready for the morning is like the cherry on top. It just lets me know that I have got it all the way together. <laughs> it really is the little things in life. That's it though. Thank you guys for hanging out with me this Sunday and Monday. I hope you enjoyed watching and I'll see you again real soon.